Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of my series, Every Effect in Adobe Premiere Pro Explained, we're going to be taking a look at the Distort Video Effects folder and all the effects in it. So let's jump into it with the first one, which is Corner Pin. So if I was to apply a corner pin effect on this clip here, it allows me to pin each corner from its original point to another specific point. So you can see the upper left corner is at zero, zero. If I move the X coordinate right, it starts to do a perspective shift and move that corner point. If I move it down on the Y coordinate, you'll see it start to shift like so. Now, instead of adjusting the sliders, you can also highlight your selection tool when working with the effect. This might be a little bit easier. You can just click and drag the points to where you want. It's a little bit more intuitive. Let's say I was to stack this video onto this video. I could perhaps try to put it in scale on the side of this building. So you could use this for shapes or video layers and get creative with it. Next up, we have the lens distortion effect. This allows us to distort the lens that we're viewing the video from. So you can add curvature or remove curvature like so. You can get some really cool effects there. You can also do the vertical or side to side curvature. A quick point before we head off to the next one, something I haven't mentioned yet in this series, is whenever working with effects, you see this, these yellow and red and green lines sometimes. That's simply Premiere Pro telling you the buffering amount that you have, especially when you start to stack some of these heavier effects like distortions that generate animations. You can get some r yellow or red lines, which means that things might not play as you expect them to unless you do something like an in and out render preview. So sequence, render, in to out, and you can get a little bit of a preview if you have a bunch of effects stacked onto a clip so that you can preview your effects a little bit more smoothly or you could lower the quality a bit if you're having a hard time. So that's depending on your machine. Just something to note, just some more information about how to read the UI. But going on to the next effect, we have magnify, which is pretty self-explanatory. It allows us to magnify. It starts off as a circle by default. So you can see in the left side of the effects control panel, we can adjust the circle shape to be a circle or a square, and we can move the center point around. Again, if you have your selection tool, you can move it around like this. So let's say I want to magnify this three. I can increase the size of the square or circle, and I can also increase the magnification amount. So if we're really trying to zoom in, or just a little bit, we can do that. You can also feather the edges of your shape. So there we've feathered that edge, and you can lower the opacity or increase it. So you can keyframe effects in that way or blend things together. You have some other options for scaling and blending if you did want to blend the magnification in. Next up, we have the mirror effect. This is one that you might be familiar with. Many cameras and softwares come with this as a stock kind of option. And in it, we have the choice to choose a reflection center and angle. So basically, we're picking a point or line of reflection. So if I make it 90 degrees, you can see it's just a 90 degrees line. If I move the Y position, I can move it up or down. Moving the X position when it's a straight line won't really do anything. But if I had it as a 180 degree line, you do want to be careful if sometimes it goes black. That just means you need to move the line back over a certain way. If I use my selection tool on this, in the same way I can see the point and move it like so. The cool part is, like I've been saying, you can stack any of these effects. So I can stack another mirror at another line of reflection. And now with two mirrors stacked up, I, have, I can quickly create kaleidoscopic type of effects. And don't forget that you can keyframe any of these. So you can keyframe weird kaleidoscopic effects going on. Next up, we have offset. This is a pretty simple effect, but it could be used in combination with others to create a, a rolling type of look. So offset allows you to shift the center of the image over, kind of like a rolling film. You can offset up or down. It basically just moves the center of the image over. And there's a lot of cool ways that I can imagine using this or abstract ways that you can put this to use with keyframes to create rolling transitions. You can do stuff like this with blending modes. It's a pretty cool effect in general. Now, this next effect is rolling shutter repair. It's less of an effect, more as like a, a utility that you can use. On certain clips and cameras, depending on how you shot it, 
there might be times where you whip the camera left and right too fast and you get a jello type of effect. This clip really isn't that good of an example. And if you apply the rolling shutter effect on there, it lets you try to reduce that jiggling effect that's happening. This is one that I'd probably do better justice creating a separate video on, but you get a brief idea of what it may be used for. It's less of a creative effect, more of a fix. But next up we have sphere eyes. This is a pretty simple to understand one. Visually, it just lets you sphere eyes the clip. So if I were to apply it on this clock here, it's kind of like the lens distortion, but from one specific circular point. If I make the radius bigger, it makes that bigger. And I can change the center of the sphere. So you can see it kind of creates like a, a bubble of gas underneath your video that's distorting it. Next up, we have transform. Now you do have transform options always available under your video section, like scale, position, rotation, but sometimes you need them as an effect rather than on the video clip. And so transform allows you all those same options like anchor point, position, scale, and transform also has a couple of its own options that you don't get in the video folder, like skew, which allows you to skew your video a little bit and skew axis. So it has a little bit more options for perspective. You also have the shutter angle tools, which can allow you to get some nice motion blur when you're keyframing certain effects, as you might be familiar with, with things like my zoom transition. Next up, we have turbulent displace. This is a fun one. It creates a displacement in different kind of mathematical patterns. But the cool part is you can animate this. So there's an evolution section and you can just have it continuously rotate 360 degrees, making these kind of undulating displacements and waves. Also the size, you can lower it or increase it for some big or large patterns. This is one where you're probably gonna wanna keyframe some animation into it to get that displacement going with the evolution settings. The next one in our alphabetically ordered list here is twirl. This is pretty common. You might be familiar with it from Photoshop, but it just allows us to twirl from the center. A lot of people might use this on faces, um, sometimes it's kind of like a joke type of effect, but you can see depending on the clip, it could also create some pretty cool distortions. You have options to adjust how much angle it twirls and how big that radius of twirl is, which could create some pretty cool effects if you keyframe them like that. You can also adjust the center so it can start from the middle or it can be on the edge. The next one is warp stabilizer, kind of like I was saying with rolling shutter repair. This one's a little bit more commonly used. If you ever have shaky footage, warp stabilizer when applied onto the clip will analyze your footage and try to fix and stabilize the footage. If you'd like, I have a full separate dedicated tutorial just on warp stabilizer, which might help you further. Last but not least, we have wave warp, which is actually one of my favorite effects in Premiere because it's one of the only ones that comes with built-in animation going on. So wave warp, just creates these rippling waves. It's kind of like a cousin to turbulent displace, but you can see it automatically animates the waves and you can just influence the speed. So if you want it to be zero, that will not animate them anymore. But if you want to make it faster, you can make it like 10 and now the waves will go pretty fast. You can also increase the size and width of the waves. So I've done a lot of cool glitch tutorials with this. And when, when you do stretch it past the limits of the video's alpha shape, you can use the pinning effects on this and many of these other effects to pin the edges back down, kind of stretch them back down. And now we have this crazy warp going on, but there's all different kinds. You can do sine waves. These are all mathematical waves that you might be familiar with. So that's wave warp. You know, it can create scan lines, all, that, all type of stuff. In the next video in this series, we're going to be taking a look at the generate effects which are actually some of the most unique and interesting effects because they can generate things from scratch without working on a video. So make sure you're subscribed, check out the playlist for all of these, every effect in Premiere Explained, and I'll see you in the next video.